Now, when you're in a relationship, you are meant to be able to trust your partner. But what if you woke up one day, £26,000 in debt, realising you'd been a victim of financial abuse? Well, that's exactly what happened to our next guest, uh, Sarah. But when it comes to financial abuse, what are the warning signs and how can you protect yourself if you are worried that you become a victim of it? Well, joining us now is Martin Lewis alongside Sarah, whose identity we have hidden due to legal reasons. Uh, welcome to both of you. And Sarah, thank you for being brave enough and speaking about this today. It's a very, very important subject. Um, the, the guy that you were with, you met him at a party. You, were, you described yourself at the time as being very, very young, very naive and very quickly into this relationship, the physical abuse happened. Yes. And by five months into the relationship, things had progressed quite quickly and you found yourself pregnant. So you were very much in this situation where it was physically abusive, but you, you couldn't quite find a way out of it, could you? Yes. At the time, I'd never even heard of domestic violence. So I had no clue really what I was involved with. And like I say, my child was born fairly early on into the relationship. Um, so you're kind of trying to make things work mm. whilst dealing with the abuse. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, a, 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 the appalling physical abuse and that the, and that the reason Martin is here now is because the other side of that was also this financial abuse. What form did that take? So that started with more subtle things like he knew the PIN number for my bank accounts and there would be several occasions I would go to the bank to withdraw money to find I was overdrawn and the money was gone. And when I would question him about it, he would say he'd had to use the money to pay off some debts and he promised he would give it back, but never would. And then it got more serious because he took out a loan um, in your name. Everything, all of this was in your name. Um, mm -hmm. And he was also spending the money that you had for the rent elsewhere. So you yes. were getting deeper and deeper into this. Um, when, when did you first realise how much debt had been accumulated? It wasn't actually until after the relationship um, and after the incident took place, the debt letters started coming into my home and I would contact the creditors and say, you know, I would explain the situation and say I was in an abusive relationship and these debts were not as a result of anything I had done, but they would simply say that it was in my name and there was nothing yeah. that they could do. And by this point, of course, the charges had been added and the interest, so they were just sky oh, yeah. high, yeah. yeah. Well, you told him that the relationship had to end. Yes. Um, and uh, that was... How was that met? Pardon? How, how did he take that news? So, after a particularly bad weekend, I'd suffered quite a lot of physical and emotional abuse. I had actually confronted my ex and said that I had felt like taking my own life and, you know, because of the way he was treating me. So I told him that I wanted to leave the relationship, I wanted to end the relationship. And a couple of weeks after doing so, he told me he was going to kill me. And the next night he came into my home and assaulted me to the point of needing reconstructive surgery. Well, he pleaded um, guilty to GBH, wounding with intent and battery in August 2012, and he was sentenced to 19 months imprisonment. So not only emotionally have you got to get through, physically you've got to get through all of this. You are picking up the pieces, and I know that you were then rehomed to start, to begin to start life again, but you are left with so many scars in different areas, physically, emotionally, but also financially. Yeah, yeah. And so you sought help, didn't you? Where did yes. you go first of all? Yes, initially I used a charity called Step Change mm. and they contact all your creditors and they take a lot of the pressure off yourself and they distribute a monthly allowance to each of the debts. Mm. So for seven years I've been paying off the debt that way and then I got in touch with a charity called Surviving Economic Abuse and they put me in touch with another service who helped me and what they do is they gather up as much inform information as they can about your case and they put together a case and they 
take this to the creditors and explain that the debts are a result of financial abuse and what they ask for is a write-off of the debts. So it took some time, yeah. but eventually the creditors did agree to write the debt off. So wow. I was due to be in debt for the next 16 years of my life, which was quite a daunting thought. Mm. Um, but now, you know, I'm officially debt free, but I'm still having to start again, and build my way up the credit ladder. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, right. Martin, um, you can report this to the police. You can and you should, certainly, if you're feeling threatened. Uh, I mean, well done, Sarah. Sarah's brilliant and so going to help so many people. I've been working on this for about a month, doing detailed research on it, and a member of my team came to me and said it's happened to her mm -hmm. and I'm going to be publishing her, her, her blog later, uh, anonymously. This is a very common thing. It's not law in the UK. <sighs> that, that, that's, that's complex. In 2019, the Domestic Abuse Bill defined financial abuse as a form of domestic violence. That hasn't passed through law yet, hopefully it will by 2021. But already in 2015 we have legislation called co co coercive and controlling behaviour legislation, which covers this anyway to an extent. If someone is trying to coerce you, uh, physically or financially, report it to the police. Uh, just let me define financial abuse for you. It is a form of domestic violence. Let's not shy away from that. It is controlling another adult's access to their finances or ability to earn in order to control or intimidate them or reduce their independence. Forcing you to add them to their bank account is one classic definition. Taking debt out in your name is another. The, that is what financial abuse is all about. I mean, yes, there's, there's lots of quasi-legal what counts where and what, but if someone, I mean, certainly in Sarah's case, it's pretty clear-cut, it's a mm -hmm. form of domestic violence. If you are being coerced or controlled through your finances, and certainly if you feel threatened, call the police on 999, and if not, report it to them more generally. So what are the signs to look out for? Because this can all start with innocent requests for money or, like, sort of taking a bit of cash out of your purse or your wallet, and then it moves on from well, there. Well, it, it can. It starts exactly as you've just said. Um, it, even the suggestion, why don't you stay at home and I will go out and do the earning and you look after the children. Now, all these things, someone will be going, hold on, that happens to me and that's perfect can be absolutely normal in a loving, trusting, non-abusive relationship. But if they're combined with aggressive or manipulative behaviour, then it's a bad sign. And it can be tough to accept, as I'm sure it was for Sarah, that the person you love is mm. also the person who's mm. abusing you in that way. Now, what I would suggest is, if you're sitting at home and this is ringing a bell, you can ring the Dem National Domestic Violence Helpline to get some more information to see whether you think it's you. It can be the men's advice line. Domestic abuse and, and financial abuse is not just a women's issue. And there's also the national LGBT and domestic abuse hotline. Mm. You know, it can be anyone. You can be a same-sex couple having this happen to you as well. Mm. So anybody feeling that, get in touch. Signs of your friends is actually... In a way, I, I put a lot more information on the internet. Perhaps the biggest thing we can do today is tell people what to watch for in people they love and care about. So here you go. If they don't have the money to pay for things like food and bills, and they can't explain why they now have a lack of access. If there's changes to their standards of living, if they can't check their bank balance, if they become socially withdrawn, these are all indicative of the start of a form of financial abuse. Mm. You might want to talk to them. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, then you as a friend can call one of those helplines mm. and talk to the helpline to see... We all want a sense check. We all want to know, am I, is it, have I just totally got the wrong end of the stick? And those helplines will be able to do that. This is a very big and serious issue. What, uh, what are the banks doing? Banks have actually not been bad at all. I mean, Barclays, Co-op, Lloyds, Halifax, HSBC, Santander now have, um, uh, have joined a voluntary code for helping with financial abuse. They're trying to train their staff. HSBC and Barclays, for example, will now let you have an anonymised sort code, because you know your sort code is linked to your branch. Mm. So if you're ex-partner has to give you money, they can find out where in the country you're living if you've moved by your sort code. Of course, so you now, don't even think about So now like they that. can have an anonymous sort code, PO boxes. Just remember, though, people with joint accounts, if I have a joint account with you, I can take all the cash. I don't need your permission. Mm. If you don't want that, ask that you both have to sign. It slows things down, but two people signing a joint account means you both have to make the decision. I put much more help online. Oh, right. If you're worried, please read. Thank, thank you, Martin. Thank you we'll see you much. a little bit later yes, on for the, for the phone as well. Sarah, and Sarah, thank, thank you so much thank for coming in today. Thank you.